What's up, everyone? Master Fox here today. Big news with the OCG dropping their April 1st ban list. With this, I think the TCG will have a ban list up soon as well. I expect one to come out maybe a week or two after Premium Gold 3 comes out, but we'll see when that time comes. Now, let's take a look at these changes. There's a lot of them. Forbidden, we have Performal Pal, Monkey Board, Lavalvo Chain, and Life Equalizer. Monkey Board is definitely deserving in my opinion, but it is a big hit to Draco Pals. If you guys watched YCS Las Vegas in the finals, the Draco Pal player actually only won because he top decked Monkey Board. Monkey Board is a one card scale and a very powerful one at that being a low scale for the deck. So this being banned is probably pretty good in my opinion. I think it needs to be banned to give balance to the Draco Pal deck. Lavalvo Chain is kind of a hit to follow the TCG. I have mixed opinions about this, but it being banned isn't too much of a big deal. Life Equalizer, I guess the OCG had a big problem with the FTK being a thing, so they just axed Life Equalizer. That basically eliminates the FTK because if you would ban Magical Explosion, they could still could have done it with Blasting the Ruins. So Life Equalizer was the way to go there. I'm sure there will be another FTK that pops up in some time. But Life Equalizer being banned basically kills off that version of the FTK. I mean, nothing to cry about there except for you FTK players, I suppose. Moving on, limited, we have Sangan, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Dante Skarm, Performer Val, Skull Crobat Joker, Ignister, Sorcerer, Face Off, Wafering Eyes, Luster, Mass Chain Second, Tour Guide, Emergency Teleport, Domain, Pantheism, Pendulum Call, Reasoning, and Monster Gate. So massive changes in the limited section. Sangan is changed because he actually had an errata. It kind of makes him a lot worse. He's still playable, but I think he could have come back without having any changes, to be honest. But we'll talk about that later as we get to the actual errata on Sangan. Thousand Eyes. This card should have come back a long time ago. It just coming only back to limited is kind of weird, since there's not really any big difference between... 1 and 3. I guess you could summon him with instant fusion, but whatever. Dante being limited. This is a big hit to the Burning Abyss deck. Although you guys have to remember, Burning Abyss is at full power and beyond full power as it was known in the TCG, in the OCG, because they have Beatrice and they had Fiendish Rhino when we didn't, while Burning Abyss was at full power here. So they opted to hit Dante and Skarm as their hits to Burning Abyss. So they still have Graph and Seer, which even though it's kind of bad because you only have one Dante, you could theoretically still loop your Dante and then summon Beatrice's on top of the Dante, detach the Dante, and then detach a Seer later, loop the Dante back, and still summon multiple Beatrice's. So I don't think Burning Abyss is quite dead, although they did get heavily axed. Joker, that's to equalize with the TCG. Ignister being limited, this is kind of weird. I know that Draco Pals did use two of these cards, I believe, but it being limited isn't too big of a hit. Sorcerer, this card needs to be limited or banned. Sorcerer is kind of the ignition of all your plays in Draco Pals, although the really powerful card, I agree, is Draco Faceoff. Draco Faceoff is the main power card. Now, Wavering Eyes, finally, finally, this card sees some hits on this list. This card was deserving for a long time. And seeing a hit is fine. Luster Pendulum, this is to equalize with the TCG. It deserves its hit as well. Mass Chain Second is really, really odd to me. Although I do know kind of the reasoning behind this. In the OCG, Burning Abyss used Mass Chain Second a lot to access Dark Law. I know a lot of players think that Mass Chain Second shouldn't have even been made because it gives access to cards like Dark Law to decks that aren't even hero related. So I can understand this. Mass Chain Second doesn't really hurt heroes because they didn't really use it. So it doesn't really hurt heroes, so I'm okay with that. I guess Burning Abyss using Dark Law was a bigger problem in the OCG than it ever was in the TCG. Tour Guide is an equalizing hit to Burning Abyss. Emergency Teleport is interesting. I think it's mainly because of the Quantum Engine in the OCG since they don't have Cosmos. But once Cosmos do get to the OCG, I suppose that they've already dealt with that problem. Now for Monarchs. I think Monarchs are basically dead with these hits. Domain eliminates their consistency as well as their lock. And then you have Pantheism. Pantheism is a very important card in Monarchs because Monarchs need to access this card within turn 1 or turn 2 to be able to really get their plays rolling. And this card is kind of what prevents bricking and gets you out of bricking situations. So hitting it to 1 is a devastating hit to Monarchs because this makes bricking much more likely 
and it already was a big problem with monarchs as is with three pantheism. So now that it's at one, I don't see monarchs being very competitive at all. Pendulum Call is honestly overkill to magicians. If you guys saw my video, magicians have basically dropped off in the TCG, and they're not that big of a threat in the OCG either. And if you guys recall, I believe in the OCG, Wisdom Eye is at 1 as well. So now they have Pendulum Call at 1, Wisdom Eye at 1, and Joker at 1, which essentially makes Magicians utterly worthless as a deck because they're lost all sorts of consistency via Wisdom Eye, Joker, and Pendulum Call. I don't really understand this hit, but let's move on. The hit Reasoning and Monster Gate as well. I don't know what decks in the OCG were using that. But I guess if the TCG follows suit, Infernoids will not have a very good day. Now moving on to semi-limited, we have a single Super Rejuvenation. I think Super Rejuvenation was limited for a long time and now they're kind of moving it up. This is probably to push Blue Eyes White Dragon, the deck, in the coming set I think. I don't really know why it's moving up. Honestly, I think it can move up with the Dragon Rollers gone, but it's kind of a weird semi-limit. Anyways, let's move on to the unlimited cards. We have Glow Up Bulb. Curry Bandit, Malicious, Abyssius, Mind Control, Book of Moon, Gold Sarcophagus, Allure of Darkness, Dragon Shrine, and Crush Card Virus. Glow Bulb, this card should have moved up a long time ago. Curry Bandit, same thing. The TCG never really had a problem with this card. It was way back when Mythic Rulers used it or something like that, and they hit it. Also, Shadals used it. Actually, I think it was Shadals that caused the hit in the OCG. Malicious, I think the OCG was only afraid because they have Stratos, but that's a ridiculous fear with all the new stuff we have here. Mermail Abyssia is moving up. It's kind of strange. The OCG had a much different way of hitting the water deck compared to the TCG, and Abyssia was one of the ways they hit it. They had Diva at 3, I want to say. Don't quote me on that though, but I think they have Diva at 3. So moving Abyssia up basically makes Mermail even more powerful, especially with the relative hits to the other decks. Burning Abyss had been hit, Draco Palace has been hit, Magicians has been hit, and Monarchs has been hit, basically leaving Mermail's free reign, and then now you're giving it back more cards too. So Mermail's is going to be a major threat in the OCG in my opinion. Mind Control moving up, I'm honestly fine with that. It's more of a combo card in combo-centric decks. It's probably good in only decks like Rank 4 based decks or maybe Synchro based decks. Book of Moon, this card honestly should move up to Unlimited. So should Gold Sarcophagus. Allure, maybe I'm a little bit more shaky on, but I don't really see any problems right now. Dragon Shrine, I honestly forgot that that card was limited at all in the OCG. And Crush Card Virus, now with its errata, I honestly think it could be bad because it allows your opponent to set up their graveyard whatever way they want. Here in the TCG, using it against even decks like Monarchs or Cosmos is a bad play because Cosmos can set up their graveyard. You're basically giving them a free tin can play. And then with Monarchs, they could send things like Adea and Eidos, which sets up a tribute summon play. So Crush Card is not not as good as it once was. And then for the last thing, let's talk about Saint Anne's Errata. So Saint Anne now can only be used once per turn. And as an additional restriction, the monster that's added to your hand cannot activate its effect for the rest of this turn. So basically making him much slower than he already was. I don't know what decks would even use Sangan. I honestly think Sangan was balanced as is. But Konami decided to rata him to bring him back. Which is fine, I guess. The only thing I have a problem with is most decks already have a more powerful searcher than Sangan that's in archetype as well. I can't see many meta decks opting to use Sangan over their in archetype searcher, but whatever. Konami decided to errata him and now he's back in the OCG at least. I don't see him coming back in the TCG in the next list, but maybe in the near future. So that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think about this ban list? I honestly think this is a crazy overhaul and we don't know what's going to come next in the meta game in the OCG at least. We'll see if the TCG is this crazy. Usually the TCG is a little bit more conservative. So I don't see any big list like this or any major changes like this in the TCG. Anyways, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.